The odds of a child being in a Broadway show are 1 in 11,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit autismspeaks.org. Hello, I'm Commissioner Emma Darnell, and this is The Mighty Five. Today on The Mighty Five, an affordable housing crisis in the city of Atlanta and Fulton County, forcing many to live outside of the city limits. The housing is not there. When you're talking three, four hundred, maybe even five hundred individuals being displaced within a two, two and a half year period. They're going to put us on the outside. But we don't want to be put on the outside of the city limits. What's wrong with us living in the city? We'll address this and more today on The Mighty Five with an in-depth background report and a discussion on the Mighty Five Power Panel. The Reverend Arthur Carson from Springfield Baptist Church. LaShondra Butler from the Atlanta Board of Education. And Mara Shallop from Creative Loafing. All here on the Mighty Five. Welcome to the Mighty Five. I'm Commissioner Emma Darnell. This program is designed for you the people of District 5 who we represent. We want you to learn more about your government, your community, and the issues affecting all of us. My hope and our goal is to provide information that you cannot get anywhere else. Uh, each month, we plan to cover subjects that you want to hear, subjects such as libraries, public health, mental health, senior services, human health and the environment, jobs, ethics, and all the other ways in which your tax dollars are being spent. We will also cover issues relating to the Grady Health System and MARTA, which you pay for. Today's topic focuses on the number one concern in District 5, housing and the affordable housing crisis. We will be joined by three experts in the field who advise me and who are heavily involved in responding to the workforce housing and the senior housing crisis in Atlanta and Fulton County. And later in the program, I will have a very brief commentary on today's topic. Before we get started, I wanted to announce that the town hall meeting, District 5, will be held on September the 30th at 4 p.m. at the Harriet G. Darnell Senior Multi-Purpose Facility. You will be hearing more from me about our third quarter town hall meeting on September 30th. Mark your calendars now. We have business of importance. McGruff the Crime Dog here. We've all heard of identity theft. Now I'm going to show you how those thieves do it. Watch. He's photographing her credit card with his cell phone. To learn how to protect yourself from identity theft, go to weprevent.org. Keep your identity to yourself and help take a bite out of crime. Welcome back to the Mighty Five. It's now time for our power panel. Today, uh, joining me on the panel is Mara Shallop. Ms. Shallop is a senior writer at Creative Loafing and is an award-winning journalist who has spent years covering the issue of housing in Fulton County and the epidemic displacement of public housing residents, Ms. Shallop. And the Reverend Arthur Carson is with us. Uh, Reverend Carson has been pastor of the Springfield Missionary Baptist Church for 30 years. He is a member of ABLE, Atlanta's Building Leadership for Empowerment, and the Near My Housing Alliance. Our third guest today is LaShondra Butler. Ms. Butler is Deputy Director for the Atlanta Office of Enterprise Community Partners, a national organization that works strategically to see that all people have the opportunity for fit and affordable housing. Uh, Ms. Butler is also a resident of District 5 and an elected member of the Atlanta Board of Education. Welcome to each of you. Thank you. And thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you. thank you. Now we would like to before we get started, uh, get a little background on the affordable housing crisis uh, here in Fulton County. 
and especially uh, in District 5. Uh, here's Mighty 5 reporter Rick Blaylock with that. Started halfway. Georgia May Anderson spends a few moments each day trying to put all the pieces of her puzzle together. A senior citizen with diabetes, she says it helps her pass the time. An awful lot of time, she says she spent recently worrying about where she will live if she's forced to move out. She, like several hundred other seniors, calls the Roosevelt House home. Also down the block on what used to be Tequit Drive, now Centennial Olympic Park Drive, is another senior high-rise apartment building called the Palmer House. Both are operated by the Atlanta Housing Authority, and the tenants here have been told these two buildings are next on the list of a string of public housing authority redevelopments. It says here on the information that we have that you all have to be out by April of 2009. Uh, do you have any idea where you're going to go, where you're going to be? Have they told you uh, how they plan to help you? Well, they say that a lot of buildings are going up now, you know, like uh, high rises for senior citizens disabled. But we really don't know where. Atlanta has been known as the city too busy to hate, but some say it's now becoming the city too expensive to live. Everywhere you turn, there's a new development. And of the residential properties, many exceed the cost of what is considered affordable. And that's where Atlanta is facing a crisis, an affordable housing crisis. Fulton County employees who wish to live in the city of Atlanta can no longer afford to. Research from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Fulton County and the National Association of Home Builders indicates that the median price of a home in the Atlanta Metro in 2006 was more than $220,000. In order to successfully buy a home in that range, a home buyer must earn nearly $70,000 a year. That's the median income needed to buy a home. And most Fulton County employees don't earn anywhere near that. For example, accounting supervisors make on average $58,000 a year. Firefighters, about $34,000. Police officers get the same as firefighters, about $34,000. Detention officers in Fulton County make $25,000 on average. And administrative assistants, $22,000 a year. And it is not the traditional family of four with two incomes that make up the bulk of home buyers anymore. The primary household unit that needs affordable housing in Fulton County and Atlanta is a household headed by a single female who earns from $39,000 to $55,000 a year. This is my daughter, younger, and my family. Mm -hmm. When you put a human face on all those numbers, you really start to see the effect the situation is having on a city and a county that has been heralded around the country for historically taking care of the least of these. Faces like Geneva Howard and Agnes Williams, residents of Roosevelt House who fear like the other people who lived in public housing units, they too will be forced out. Now, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about the G word, gentrification. Um, but some people might suggest that's what's happening here, that you all are being replaced by more lucrative properties, perhaps, who knows? What, what do you think about that? Across the street from us was Georgia State, domes for the college kids. Now they have... Georgia Tech across the street. And I kind of think that's why they want us move out of here. That's what they, they I, I mean, Georgia, Georgia Tech might want this property. Agnes Williams' point is rather valid when you consider that for the past several years, most of all of the construction around here has been for the Georgia Tech campus or for private enterprise. In fact, residents here at the Roosevelt House will tell you they get a reminder each and every morning when they open their blinds and they look out the window, right across the street is the Georgia Tech Bobby Dodd Football Stadium. But it's not just the thought of moving that scares the seniors. It's what could happen after that. Many depend on the proximity of their homes to grocery stores, doctors, churches, and senior citizen centers. With transportation provided by the Fulton County Human Services Department, the senior centers have become part of a daily regimen for the senior citizens. The Northside Shepherd Senior Center is close by in northwest Atlanta and serves a number of residents who live in the Palmer and Roosevelt houses. The day we showed up, we found many of the seniors exercising. Bob Wiseman is a coordinator here and an advocate for the elderly. He's been helping senior citizens find new housing, but there simply is not enough that any fixed-income senior can afford without having to move outside of Fulton County. 
the housing is not there. And when you're talking three, four hundred, maybe even five hundred individuals being displaced within a two, two and a half year period, the, the high rises that are in the center do allow subsidized housing. They don't have fast enough turnover to absorb that. And what about returning to Roosevelt or Palmer House? Tenants have been told that the buildings are to either be demolished and replaced or renovated. One thing they are certain about is that they are uncertain, puzzled, like Georgia May Anderson trying to get all the pieces to fit. Oh, that doesn't fit there. In Atlanta for the Mighty Five, I'm Rick Blaylock reporting. You're watching The Mighty Five with Emma Darnell. It's now time for the power panel. Here's moderator Emma Darnell. Now that we have some background, uh, let us begin. I'd like to begin at the beginning. All right. When I graduated uh, from school, moved into District 5 with my parents, uh, folks were able to buy homes. Yes. Uh, they were able to build families. Mm -hmm build entire communities, in fact, okay. called Collier Heights, yes. the Hollywood Road area, yes. and so on. These were built by working families. That's right. That has changed mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, as we saw from the segment that we just viewed, sure. the gap between what housing costs in District 5 now yes. and the incomes that people have sure. make it impossible for our children and our grandchildren to live there. That's correct. And I guess we need to begin at the beginning. Yes. Um, Thousands of people have been displaced. True. Uh, not by flood. No. Uh, but they have been displaced by factors uh, over which they had no control. And I think that before we get into the main part of this discussion, which is what are we doing in government and in the nonprofit sector yes. to respond to this crisis, mm -hmm. we want to make full use, uh, Mara, of the facts and information that you've gathered as a reporter uh, in terms of what really created some of the problem that we have in terms of the lack of housing and specifically senior housing and housing for working families. Well, the unfortunate thing is that it's about to get worse. Um, you know, hopefully there can be some planning done to offset this, but as you all know, um, the Atlanta Housing Authority has done, on the one hand, a really great job of revitalizing communities. In the process, however, they've displaced thousands of public housing families. Um, that has resulted in mixed income communities to which odds are about a tenth of the original residents come back. Now, they do set aside some affordable housing in those communities, but um, often it's not benefiting the, those people who lived there before, and there's far fewer numbers that we're looking at. So. Right. Um, and with, in regards to senior housing in particular, um, there's a bunch of senior high rises about to come down in the next two years. Um, it you know, remains to be seen how those folks will fare. Well, are you saying that some of the displacement has occurred because of public policies? It's true, yeah. And in this particular case, uh, housing was uh, torn down and uh, mixed income developments were created but because there was no unit for unit replacement, Precisely. you just have a lot of people out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. The replacement for whom we um, don't have any room. The replacement took the form of um, vouchers, Section 8 vouchers, uh, federally subsidized, reduced rent that um, arguably folks can use anywhere in the city or even beyond. Um, but what happened? How? Well, what happens is you know that tax isn't already you know, some say short supply of affordable housing. So you have housing that was once subsidized by the Atlanta Housing Authority, um, kind of moving into that public um, segment, private market. And, you know, what you see is way more people on the um, waiting list, A, for public housing, and B, for those vouchers. So it is taxing the supply we have. And Reverend Carson, didn't yes. they have long waiting lists even before they tore down public housing? They did. Uh, Reverend, How uh, Reverend Carson is pastor of a church that's in the Perry Homes community exactly and is right. a leader in that community. Uh, Reverend Carson, we were under the impression that 
uh, if those units were torn down, yes. then people would be able to return to Correct. the new mixed income developments. What has been your observation and, and, and your experience? My observation that is that that has not happened. And of course, um, the numbers are even lower than they had projected. I mean, number one, they're not there. And then number two, the numbers are far below. And of course, I, I know that part of that reason is due to the fact that there are these stringent demands, uh, requirements. And uh, it's been appalling because at, when I came to the community, it was a viable community. And not everybody who lived in public housing, not 100%, were, were, were on drugs or dealing in drugs. We know, we know yeah. people that sent children to Clark College yes, we from do. the project. Yes, we do. Yes. And, and, and some of those people are in our church now yes. who grew up in burial homes. However, uh, when we look at the number of, of people who were able to return after the development, it is far below what we had anticipated. Well, that certainly seems to be one of the explanations for the existence of a large number of people who are without adequate housing. I agree. We saw in that segment, LaShondra, that uh, along with the revitalization of uh, uh, many neighborhoods in Atlanta, uh, apparently there are neighborhoods even with all of this growth uh, where there's a big gap between the income and the cost of housing. Uh, what is the reason that housing went up so fast and uh, what is your take on, on this gap, affordability gap, which uh, the city of Atlanta had talks about in their analysis of of, of the affordable housing crisis? Well, I would probably accredit it to a couple of things. One, I would say some of the gap comes in construction costs that we have now. A lot of our developers are really experiencing a huge hike in construction costs. But the other part of it, I also think it is, is making sure we have educated, ready, sustainable buyers. Um, I don't think that we have done a good job in making sure that those who are ready to purchase homes actually are really ready. Not just ready mentally, but ready financially and that they've been educated and they're ready to go in the homes and be able to stay in the homes. So we have banks in some instances who are making loans to people who aren't qualified for them. And then two, three years down the line, they're faced with foreclosure, then we're faced with flipping, and as a result, our residents suffer. ANDP, which is one of the agencies mm -hmm. we know that works yeah. in this area, yeah. they've said that the number one buyer in Atlanta is a single black female earning between $39,000 and $55,000 right. in a situation where that buyer is attempting to, uh, to purchase a $252,000 home. Right. They That's may right. understand enough about the finances, but it might be that they just don't have the finances. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We have to be careful to count our own money <laughs> and not let others count our money. Yes. We have to be careful. And, and uh, I guess that's where some of these unscrupulous people come in, too. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, the loss of our pretty tough uh, anti-predatory lending yes. law did not help matters. It, it didn't it? help, did it? No, it did not. It That's did right. not. And so we have displacement that is coming from these high costs, the high cost of housing. Yes. And some people are saying, Reverend Carson, that is because that the demand for the up, the upscale housing just exceeds uh, the, the available land, and that's why the costs have gone up. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's the people who are moving back, and we're glad to see them come back here True. in Fulton County because right. there's tax revenues for for everybody. <laughs> right. But but when they when they come back, uh, they are they are seeking another level of of, of a house in yes. terms of its value. Yes. And therefore, uh, the investors who disinvested uh, yes. twenty yes. years yes. ago, yes. Right. they they're back now trying to accommodate uh -huh. that upscale buyer and. I guess the gap comes in because those who are still here, sure. like some of the Fulton County employees uh -huh. who work in this building, uh -huh. they can't quite come up to the kind of upscale house That's that correct. these newcomers want. That's mm -hmm. correct. And so the gap probably is coming from some economic yes. and 
forces and some social forces as well we've been advised sure. by staff yeah. uh, I, I keep thinking it kind of comes back to jobs a little bit too don't you it does. think yes Definitely. yes uh, it comes back to jobs it comes back to jobs i know there are some people out there who may not know how to buy a house and go sure. in it but it's not as many That's as right. you would think the mm -hmm. big problem is people can't find right. too many jobs uh, that will enable them right. to, uh, to, because most of the employees, as I said, right here in this building, right. they can't afford to, uh, mm -hmm. to buy a house in Atlanta right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. It does take um, uh, income to support uh, housing. And, and that's where that gap is coming that's where in. It, I, I see that as the gap. You know, you, yeah. I mean, you know, there are number of individuals who are hard working working real hard working real hard, working real hard. i mean they're not lazy <laughs> and back in my day since i'm the only single citizen here <laughs> if you work hard that's right and save mm -hmm. your money that's right you could buy a house that's what they that's told how me. they built collier heights from the ground up that's florida right. heights washington park all of those are built Hills. by working that's right people and they get to school teachers we have whole communities built that's by right. school teachers mm -hmm. but right. a school teacher making less than seventy thousand dollars a day won't that's be right. buying a house mm -hmm. in district five that's, that's right. right not I mean, a nice I, one I, I have to say that too, Commissioner, um, being a native Atlantan and a product of Atlanta Public Schools, um, as I look back in the neighborhood where my parents still live, a lot of my former teachers sure. still live there. Sure. It was at a time back in those days where you could afford to purchase a That's home correct. in the community in which you work. That's it right. was truly a community. Because mm -hmm. my grandmother used to say, you can't teach me until you <laughs> learn me. <laughs> so you've got to walk where I walk, you've got to shop right. where I shop in order to be able to teach and you. That's That's right. And one of the things, uh, going back to the policy side, yes. that we were able to do at Atlanta Public Schools, and I strongly pushed, was that even on that Beltline tag, that a certain percentage of those 5,600 affordable units to go to Atlanta public school I'm employees. Yes. Not just the teachers, That's right. but the cafeteria yes. workers, the janitors, the janitors yes. everybody. Yes. Everybody That's has right. that right That's to right. live in the city of That's Atlanta. Right. Right. So some of it is policy mm -hmm. that we have to make sure that we put in place as elected officials to make sure that our people can live in our city. And Reverend Carson, yes. in your organization and ABLE, what are some of the ways in which the public sector can help an organization uh, like the Near My House and Alliance mm -hmm. uh, help meet this need because mm -hmm. that's what we're interested in in Fulton County. We believe it's the responsibility of government yes. to work with the that's nonprofit correct. sector yes. like that's your organization yes. Yes. and see what we can do to assist. What are some of the kinds of things that we can do to assist? Well, obviously, whatever subsidies can be given mm -hmm. because one of the strategies of Nehemiah has been to take, for example, a home that was uh, beyond a person's ability to purchase and then to buy that down. And of course, one of the ways that we buy that down is through subsidies. Mm -hmm. And if there are monies that are available, and, and, and monies that are available where people don't have to jump through 10,000 hoops mm -hmm. before they can get to mm -hmm. it, you know. Um, and, and that's the essential of the Nehemiah, Nehemiah strategy. And would you agree then, from what I hear you saying, is that the best way to approach this, as far as the government is concerned, is by seeking partnerships yes, with the nonprofit community. Yes, and I'm, I'm getting a little discouraged by the private sector because they see profit all yes, the time. <laughs> but, you know, but, but with the nonprofit community, I, in fact, some of the things that we've been trying have been have, have kind of fallen short mm -hmm. of the goal because we're trying to put affordable housing goals, combine them with the goals of people who are seeking profits. Right. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't worked for us no. uh, very no. well. Uh, Ms. Shalop, what, what suggestions would you give us government folks who understand that housing is basic and fundamental mm -hmm. and that anybody who wants a house or a decent apartment and is willing to work for it ought to be able to get one in a civilized society. That's correct. Uh, I know you've done a lot of thinking about it in right. addition to reporting and how do you think the government can make the best use of the taxpayers money in this regard? It seems to me like in regards to the government's perception of housing, you know, the reaction is usually form a task force, you know, mm. get some folks to consult and, and that's certainly a good first step, but you know, you don't often see it going too far beyond that, like the exceptions being, as LaShondra mentioned, the TAD initiative, you know, when you have a project as massive as the Beltline proposal, mm. you know, working at 20% affordable housing along its route is really important. I mean, you also have to think about protections like 
how affordable is affordable? I mean, I think that's been a, a big question. <laughs> we're we're pretty much taking her, her definition on that, right. aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what we're pretty much taking that Honestly, take it. This but, is I mean, interesting. Even that, you said right. that, right? Uh, because our folks up in Alpharetta told us the other day. They said we need you all to look at that affordable again. <laughs> That's what seniors told us up there. Okay. They said seniors up there said that now they told us that these homes were available in Alpharetta mm -hmm. that were uh, uh, for seniors, and they said now I, I want to know how do, how do you find affordable? Because what we saw was not necessarily affordable. Uh, we certainly want to thank you also very very much for coming in and. Thank and you. helping us Thank think you. about this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I want you to know that uh, we are committed, the Board of Commissioners is committed in working in partnership Partner. with organizations like yours. Yes. Uh, we're going to get our facts together, Michelle. We're not going to run off on just opinions. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate good, uh, comprehensive reporting and as well as your opinions. Thank you all so very, very much for being with us today. Thank and I hope so that you'll get a chance to come back and I can Be tell delighted. you some of the things that we've done Be delighted. Uh, because of what we've heard from you all today. <laughs> and I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the people of District 5 and say thank you for thank all you, so you all are doing to make sure that no Katrina hey. happens in this community. All right. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Stay tuned. The Mighty Five will be right back after this. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants. I think I'll hold on to my CD account for short term, maybe acquire some high yield bonds. I could roll over my 401k plan. What do you think? Find out what you need to know to survive. Call or visit our website. Yeah, yeah, good idea. You're watching The Mighty Five with Emma Darnell. Here again is District 5 Commissioner Emma Darnell. We are indeed fortunate in Fulton County to have been ranked by ARC as number one in growth, number one in population, and number one in jobs. ARC also said in a recent study that Fulton County will hold that same position in the year 2030. However, our discussion today makes it very, very clear that Alvin Toffler was right when he said that this is an age not when resources make decisions, but when decisions make resources. The decisions we make together about how people live and how shelter is a priority for this government will determine more than any bottom line whether or not we are indeed a civilized society. Thank you, District 5, for the civilized manner in which you have established your priorities. We will never let you down. I'll be back in a moment. Last year, one in five children was sexually solicited online. Visit CyberTipLine.com to learn how to protect your kids' online life. You're watching The Mighty Five with Emma Darnell. Here again is District 5 Commissioner Emma Darnell. That's all the time we have for this first edition of The Mighty Five. To learn more about what we do and how we serve you, contact me. You can email me at emma.darnell at fultoncountyga.gov. You can also go to my online office on the web. Just log on to our official website at fultoncountyga.gov slash emma. And as always, you can reach the District 5 office by telephone, 404-612-8222. That's 404. 612-8222. I hope you enjoyed our first program. Make sure you let us know what you think about the program. And for the entire FGTV team and staff in the District 5 Commission Office, I'm Commissioner Emma Darnell, reminding you the woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but we have promises to keep and miles to go before we sleep and miles to go 
before we sleep. Stay alive with the mighty five. The Mighty Five is a presentation of the Office of District 5 Commissioner Emma I. Darnell.